I'm going to talk today about critical thinking and how to be more analytical. I'm going to do that by explaining or using two clear examples step by step how to think more critically and then I want to give you homework and see if you can do it on your own. Are you ready? Let's go. All right. Critical thinking depends on careful reading. And for those of you who have been following my um, lives, you know that a, a month ago, the, over the last three weeks, I discussed in two of the last three lives, reading, how to read more effectively, more carefully, and ultimately more critically. And there were three steps that I talked about in the last two lives on reading, which are also found on my YouTube account. Critical thinking depends on critical reading. And we looked in the first sec segment of the, of the live on, first of all, you have to understand the text that you're reading, so comprehension. Secondly, locating the main idea or ideas, if there are more than one, if there's more than one. And finally, in the, in the last reading, advanced reading webinar or live that I did, I talked about how to understand structure. How is the argument structured? And so these three steps are critical for your ability to think critically. And so this is an interesting um, sort of background. Now, if you did not watch those two, I will suggest that you do that. On the left, in the pink, you have how to improve your reading. That's part one. That's on comprehension and locating main ideas. And then more an advanced aspect of reading is understanding the structure and so those two are important, and I'm building on that today with this critical thinking because I am uh, I will tell you in a mo moment why, but let me tell you what critical thinking is or how you can notice it. The key to critical thinking is the questions you ask. Critical thinking begins with good questions. Now, let me tell you this, as an academic and university professor for a long time, you don't start asking good questions. You start by asking poor questions. And over time, your questions become better, or at least they should. And I'm convinced the longer I teach, you can tell a lot about a person, the, what they know and how they think by the questions they ask. And this is also a clue into critical thinking. So I'm gonna to focus today on showing you how to ask critically interesting or analytical questions. We're gonna look at asking analytical questions. Now, questions develop, especially in this presentation, from close or critical reading of a text. They can also develop from careful listening of a speech. But I'm gonna talk about a text because it's easier to teach from. In a speech, it goes very quickly. And it's hard to teach from speaking because you don't have a lot of time to process the information. But with a text, you can slow down the reading process. So here's, I answer that here. Why teach critical thinking through reading? because the text or reading slows down the thinking process and it allows you to think critically. Now, as you improve this skill, as you ask better questions, as you understand and comprehend the structure and the main idea faster, then you can utilize all of these things that I'm talking about in spoken language, in a speech, after a lecture, maybe a professor gives a lecture, and you, then you ask some very interesting critical questions. The better the question, the more impressed the professor will be, and the more noted they will take, this, this answer will be more serious uh, and thoughtful. Speech moves faster, and it's very difficult to teach this from speech. So I recommend for the teachers out there, start with reading because it slows things down. This is not easy 
This is higher level thinking, advanced thinking, analytical thinking. So we want to slow it down to give everyone a chance. Now, having said that, if you don't understand everything today, don't worry. This is our, this might be your first sort of um, exposure to critical thinking. That's fine. We're breaking the ice today. Break, to break the ice is an idiom that means we're starting. We're breaking the ice. And for most of us who have winter, there's a lot of ice to break, isn't there? All right. Let's look at a few examples. I'm going to do ones that we've already covered in the reading section. So for some of you, it will be easier to understand. So we're going to look at the first example. Now, this example, there's a lot of writing on it. I apologize, but I will go through it with you. Be patient. But in order to practice thinking critically, we have to understand a text, a reading fairly well. So here's the first example. It's the unhealthy media influence. That's the title of this short essay. In the introduction, the media became an essential part of our daily lives. Um, that's sort of, that's the beginning of the essay. Then I just skip to the main idea. On the whole, the media has a negative impact on teenage lives. So that's the main idea of this essay. Now, how is it argued? I've underlined in the next paragraph, the next two paragraphs, the main supporting ideas of the main idea. So the main idea is the media has a negative impact on teenagers. The supporting ideas are found in the second and third paragraphs. So the second paragraph, the media introduces unrealistic standards for appearance. And then in the third paragraph, the other negative influence, the media promotes fast food and soft drinks, unhealthy food and drink. So these are two ways. Now, the, how do we understand? So we, we understand the text. We've identified the main idea. Media is negative on teenagers. And then the structure. What's the structure? Well, to be honest, the second and third paragraphs are based on general ideas. There's no real... It's just general ideas. Idea number one about these... un realistic standards of beauty, and number two, about unhealthy food or an unhealthy diet. Now, I'm going to take the same paragraph, the same essay, um, and now we're going to analyze it. We're going to look at it critically. We're going to think critically about it. So now that you understand it, I'm going to give you a slightly different one, and we're going to use this to think critically. So it's almost the same, but not quite. It's the media's unhealthy influence on teenagers but actually it's people now. The media, I'll just skip to the introduction, the media has gradually had a more negative impact on people's lives. Now, if you look at the first, second paragraph, so that the first, the introduction is the main idea over, to, gradually had a negative impact. Look at the second paragraph. The first TV advertisements promoted products that benefited you in the 1950s. And then if you go to the third paragraph, you see in 1968. And so we see that this is now based on time. You look at the very bottom, the structure is based on time or chronology. So we'll just read the third paragraph. Gradually, propaganda and misleading information became, sorry, became, not because, became part of advertising in the 1968 presidential election. And then I give an example. So this is an, this is an essay that says that over time, media became more negative. And it does that by, it's structured chronologically. I hope that's clear. I've tried to um, slow this down to make it clear. Now, once we understand the main idea and the structure, 
we can begin to think critically. This is where the fun begins. If you want to exercise your mind, if you want to be more analytical. So I'm going to give you basic, this is a basic introduction. This is not going to be very advanced, but it's a basic introduction on how to think critically. So here are basic questions of critical thinking based on that essay we've just read. So one question we can ask, is time the best way to assess this topic? That's a really good question that shows critical thinking. Is time, because we're going 1950s, 1968, is time the best way to address the topic? That's a very good basic question that shows critical thinking. Number two, a little bit more specific about time, is going by decades, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, a decade is 10 years. Is that appropriate? Is that the most appropriate? And then look at the third question that shows critical thinking. What about the time periods selected? Are they appropriate? Should we have started with the 1940s? Why or why not? When do we finish the essay? Do we finish in 2020 or do we finish in 2000? So are they appropriate? Are, some, uh, are there some time periods that are, are omitted that should be included or vice versa? These are great questions that show critical thinking. And finally, the last question, what are the pro this is a general question but an excellent question what are the problems with analyzing this subject by time what are the problems now what you're going to find out is good questions don't come quickly just like learning a language you learn to think critically over time by asking questions, asking questions, and then you start to see which ones are good, which ones are better, and which ones are the best, and which ones aren't so good. So this is a practice you home, but I, I'm convinced this is so critical. If you want to rise in your, if you want to um, see, um, you know, rise in a career, do well, success, be successful in any important position in a company, you have to be able to think critically and ask great questions. If you're young, now's the time to practice this. Ask bad questions. It doesn't matter. This is how you improve. And this is what I try to teach my students at university. Even the best students ask poor questions. This is not something you're born with. You have to develop this ability to think critically. I'm, I'm going to continue to the end of the, of the live. I will answer all questions at the very end. So please hold your question. Don't get frustrated. I want to look at a second example. Um, it's, I'm going to move a little bit further to a little bit more advanced critical thinking. Not completely advanced, but a bit more advanced. Now, we're going to look, as we did two weeks ago or three weeks ago, of the automobile's influence. So this is a short essay on the influence of the automobile. So in the introduction, we have the main idea that we've identified, the automobile has had the most significant impact on humans, more than trains and planes. That was, you had three options. So it's had the most amongst trains and planes. All right, there are three reasons in this essay. Number one, the layout of the city is based on roads, and roads are used by cars. Number two, urban pollution. Urban means city. Urban pollution from automobiles is higher than any other form of transportation. And number uh, the third point is when the move to the suburbs, suburbs are those outside, just outside the city, the move to the suburbs near large cities has only been possible because of the automobile. All right. Now, I hope we understand what the essay is. We have one main idea the influence of the automobile, and then three sub points that support your main idea. So we know the structure. 
Now, unlike the earlier essay where we had time as a unifier, here with the three sub points, there is no obvious unifier. In the earlier one, we had time. Here, we don't have one. It's not obvious. So right now, that's all, that is an interesting point to sort of note right away. Would it be better if there was a unifier among the points? Now, there should be because the main idea is impact on humans. On humans should be the unifier. So let's see if this is the case. I want to move to... The critical thinking questions. Number one, do these ideas, the supporting points in paragraphs two, three, and four, support the main idea? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Basically, the layout of the city, the roads, that impacted people. The pollution impacts people, and so does where you live. And these are all affected by the automobile. Now, here's a very interesting critical question, a question that shows critical thinking. Look at the next one. What is the relationship between these supporting ideas? Is the relationship between them clear? So I, I've given you what the, the three are. City infrastructure, infrastructure of the roads, environment, that's the pollution, and where people live in the suburbs. So are these, is there any relationship between those three ideas? Not really, except that the automobile influenced them on humans, influenced humans in these ways. But by themselves, it's not as unified as 1950s, 1960s, 1970s. So you can begin to see already how some essays are more unified than others just very naturally by their structure. And so this is an element of critical thinking, understanding how essays are put together. So if we look at this point in more detail, here's what we find out. The evidence reveals one direct link to humans, where they live. So the automobile is impact on humans directly where they live. That's a direct influence. Indirectly, they're influenced by the environment, that's indirect, and as well, the roads, that's an indirect influence. But the only direct influence is on where you live. And this is very interesting. And now we have the basis for more critical thinking. And I want to move now on this point and show you how we move from critical thinking to critical reasoning. And this is where it really gets exciting. Now, I just want to touch on this. I'm not talking about critical reasoning now, but, uh, uh, but or supplying answers for your questions. That's essentially what we're doing. I, but I want to just show you very briefly how exciting this becomes. So on the left is the first essay, on, is the essay. On the right is how we've changed it slightly to make it stronger and more unified. I hope that's clear. So if we look on the, on the left, it's what we've already discussed. On the right, look how we change it slightly to put humans in the center, to have all direct, uh, the all supporting ideas directly related to humans. So watch this. Travel time is affected by the road system. So people's travel time. Now humans are directly in the center. People's health is affected adversely in large cities by pollution. Now we have directly an impact on humans. And finally, the one we already discussed has a direct influence. Where we live, the living options. And so what we've done here very briefly is on the right, change the essay slightly to put people in the center. And now we have a more unified thesis. People's travel times affected health is affected, and where they live is affected by the automobile. Whereas on the left, you can't say that because it, it's not written in that way. Only with living are people in the center. Otherwise, it's indirectly related. 
Now, I know that this might be a little bit more advanced than some of you are ready for, and I apologize. If you're lost, don't worry about it. This is not a simple concept. I just wanted to introduce it. But I would like to give you a little homework. I would like you to write two or three good questions for this essay. It's a similar one that we looked at, Unhealthy Media Influence. Again, media has a negative influence, but I argue it differently, not by time, 1950s, 1960s, but by genre. Sports, it's negative because of the sports advertising. It's negative because of the fashion industry. So I would like you to try, based on the first example I talked about, try to ask two questions that show critical thinking. Again, as I said at the outset, critical, you, you see critical thinking by the questions people ask. And so what I'm trying to do here is teach you or coach you how to ask good questions that show critical thinking. So ask two questions related to this essay and you can use the first example Go back to it on YouTube. You can copy it. You can take a look and use the first example as a model. Use those questions as a model to answer these. This is really helpful. This skill is really helpful at university and any management position or any leadership position in any organization that you're going to take. You have to be able to analyze and think critically in order to effectively lead an organization. If you're not able to do that, someone else will and they will lead. Even if it's not their position, they will be de facto or in fact the leaders. So you want to develop this if you want to be a leader as, uh, later in any capacity. All right. So that's your homework. You can take a screenshot. Now, what have we learned today very briefly? I know I've thrown a lot at you. We've learned a few ideas. One, critical thinking issues or comes from careful reading. There's a symbiotic relationship. Symbiotic means that both sides benefit from each other. So the better the reader you are, the more, here's point two, the more carefully and critically you read, the better you will be at critical thinking. There is a direct relationship between the two. Number three, the, these ideas apply also to speaking or speeches, but is more, but sorry, but are more difficult, should be are, but are more difficult to execute in the beginning because it's happening so fast. So practice critical thinking with reading and writing or asking questions from a, from a text. And finally, number four, the more you practice asking questions, the better your questions become and the better critical thinker you will become as well. Now, how, did, how have I improved my critical thinking? Writing has played a big role in this, but as well, reading book reviews. If I could give you one, like one answer, it would be reading book reviews. Book reviews sh get, show you how other people analyze other people's ideas. And that's what critical thinking in many ways is about. So LRB is one example. I subscribe to it. I pay for a subscription, but you can get it for free. It is quite expensive. You can get it for free two or three articles a month. This is very advanced reading, but you are exposed to great thinkers. And that's how you become a better thinker is exposing yourself or reading good thinkers. It doesn't happen by osmosis. You don't fall asleep and wake up being a better thinker. You read good thinkers and how see how they think and then you copy them or you then begin to ask questions that they might ask. And finally, JSTOR is a more academic journal, but you can use it free six articles a month. I think six articles a month. You can Google book reviews. Most of your books that you read might be on there. Well, more academic books, but these are great resources to understand how great thinkers think 
and then how you can borrow their ideas. I hope that has been helpful. I know this has gone very quickly. I'm going to answer questions now, but if some of you want to comment, um, would you like it alive on advanced critical thinking? Because today we've only discussed critical thinking in the context of structure or the argument. There are so many things to talk about with critical thinking. That's one of a multitude. We can talk about so much. And this is where things get really interesting in my view. But I know that uh, some of us are just struggling to understand grammar and, you know, be able to speak, um, you know, sort of at an intermediate level. So this might be too much for some of us. For those who came late, you can, I'm going to upload this on my YouTube tomorrow. Don't worry if you don't understand every concept. We're breaking the ice. We're introducing you to new ideas that hopefully later will come to fruition. Something that comes to fruition develops like a flower blossoms. If something comes to fruition, it develops and you begin to understand it. All right, I would like to ask, now we have questions and answers, but I just want to say for those who have to leave, I'm gonna look at questions now. Um, we're going to meet every Wednesday in 2021 at the same time. So tell a friend, I'm here every week. We're going to do a lot of grammar over the next few weeks. I'm going to talk a lot about grammar and we're going to start with verbs because a lot of people are asking about verbs and grammar. So we're going to hit the next three weeks are going to be verbs and grammar discussions. So let's take a look at your questions now. Thank you very much, Shaha. Um, thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. <clears throat> All right, here's a good question. Are books or newspapers better? It depends on the newspaper in terms of, you know, get reading good literature. The bigger the newspaper, the better it probably is. The better writers, because they pay more money, so they get the better writers. So the BBC, the... New York Times, the LA Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post. These are probably the four biggest. Uh, Hong Kong, I think, has a very reputable um, newspaper. So there are newspapers throughout the world, uh, but the biggest cities probably. Books are good, but a lot of people I've noticed just don't have time or patience to read books. Sadly, I don't think people are reading books so much these days, unless it's a fiction book. All right, this is a good question from, uh, I can't read the name. Um, can everyone develop reading comprehension skills? Yes, they can, but for some, it takes more time. So you need to be patient. The first step, before you can critically think, before you understand structure and before you understand where the main idea is or what the main idea is, you have to be able to read the text and understand what it says. Most of us are in this first category. That's okay. But you have to keep reading and keep reading and keep reading until it becomes easier. I know this firsthand because I've learned other languages and this is what I had to do. You read and read and read until it finally becomes easier. But some, it, how long it takes depends on the person. Thank you, Yagona. I hope I got that right. Yag Yagona, one, thank you. Very good. All right, I'm only going to answer questions related to this live. All right. Some some people are asking about reading skills of aisles. I've I've, I will refer you to my reading um, videos on YouTube. Although I don't direct, I don't address reading directly, I will do a, an IELTS reading um, at some point in 2021. I have a lot to say on that subject. Thank you, Saif. I will speak more slowly next time. Thank you, Melek. I'm sorry about that. Hello. 
Happy New Year. I forgot to mention Happy New Year to everybody. Um, all right. So, so let, let's just recap. This is a great question. This person might have come a bit late. What are the techniques of critical thinking? Just to recap what I've been saying. The technique is this. Understand the article or the book or whatever it is. Understand the main idea and then understand the structure of the writing. How is it argued? What are they saying paragraph by paragraph? How does it flow? When you understand the structure and the main idea, then you can begin to think critically by asking questions about that. Now, this is an introduction to critical thinking. There are many other questions we can ask related to tone, related to sources or methodology or um, argumentation, or there are just so many things, style. There are lots of interesting things we can talk about related to critical thinking. All of them relate to the same thing, asking good questions. But today we focused only on structure and questioning, is this the best way to argue this? Or can we do it better or differently? This is the beginnings of critical thinking. It's not the only way to teach critical thinking. If you've been taught it a different way, that's fine. I'm teaching it a way that I feel most comfortable, but th this is definitely not the only way to teach critical thinking and certainly not the best way, but it's my way. Now, this isn't a writing class, but someone's asked about writing good paragraphs. I, I improved my paragraph writing by reading good paragraphs of others. So read good literature. I mentioned two sources earlier. And then copy some of the things they do. Hello, Kerala. Nice to have you here. I will speak more slowly. I'm, I'm seeing that. Scientific articles are excellent. If they're too scientific, there's a question about what about scientific articles. If it's mainly numbers and stats, then it's more difficult um, for some people. But you can still, of course, you can apply critical thinking to all of these scientific articles. Okay, very good question here by um, Fateh. Are there some structures to ask critical questions correctly? Yes. As you become more experienced, you will know that certain structures, certain arguments, certain ways of um, producing a paper um, lead to certain types of critical questions. And so this will come with experience. And so what I try to do in the beginning is take a very basic example and only look at the argument and the support arguments and start at thinking critically by looking at the relationship between the main idea and the supporting ideas and the relationship between or amongst the supporting ideas. So I started very basically, very basic with our critical thinking. But from there, we can expand into very interesting avenues. Avenues are, is a metaphor for ways. All right, very good question. All right, I think I, okay, this is a really good question asked by Tara, thank you. How do we reflect critical thinking in real life? So I've talked about writing, but do you know that you can, once you develop this skill, you can use it, I use it all the time. So in my conversations with people, as they tell me a story, I will think, okay, have they missed a point here? I might not ask them because I'm not there to criticize, but I will ask myself, have they missed a point here? What about this? Have they considered this? So once you develop this skill, you fall in love with it and you want to use it a lot because it creates very interesting conversation. The more you use your brain and you exercise thinking in a conversation, the more interesting the conversation becomes. So you, if you want to know a key to being popular, become interesting. 
and you become interesting by asking better questions. And then later, we haven't talked about it yet, but later, answering some of those questions, not just answering, asking. But asking is the beginning point of critical thinking. And so I reflect critical thinking in my everyday conversations, though I may not say it to the other person. That is a really good question. And so you can practice with everyday conversations. Uh, practice to yourself, or you can practice with others and get their reaction. Robo, please see the beginning of it on YouTube if you're unclear about what I was talking about. Hello, Nerlin. Okay. I think... Now, this is a really good question by Annie. Wow. What is more important, being analytical or being logical? Now, these are entirely separate. Being logical means you make sense. So you say things that, make, that, that are logically in succession. So they're not illogical. Being analytical is a, thinking about things in a critical way. Obviously, when you're analytical, you're also being logical. But when you're being logical, you might not always be being analytical. So they're not, they can be mutually exclusive, but not always. I think both are important. But first, be logical. And once you're logical, once you have a logical flow, then you can start to analyze it. So, once, so if your idea isn't logical, there's nothing to analyze because it's illogical and it's over. End of discussion. If you have a logical argument or an idea, now we can begin to analyze it and think, okay, let's think, is that logic the best way to approach the topic? Or can we think analytically about different ways of approaching it? I hope that makes sense. That is an excellent question. Hello, Algeria. All right. Thank you, Jadur, or Jadir, Sultan. Um, the question is how to be a critical thinker in a short period of time. I'm not sure it's possible. This takes time to develop. And you have to read, you have to think. At times, I will just think. I, I will tell you that my best critical thinking occurs when I'm on walks. So I have fallen in love with walking in parks and taking walks, especially early in the day, because my mind is able to think and I come up with some really interesting ideas. Uh, well, I think they're interesting, maybe not for others. But my critical thinking, I'm often very good when I take a walk. But what's interesting is you should find out when your mind is most critically active and try to engage in these circumstances or conditions as often as possible. For me, it's early on or anytime I'm walking, obviously alone. It's difficult if you're talking to somebody, you can't think critically uh, about something else that's rude, but if you're alone, you have time to ponder or think about things, especially if you don't have anything to worry about. If you have a lot on your mind, if you're worrying, you cannot think critically or analytically. You're only worrying about your problems. So that's a precondition to improve your analysis is that you have no nothing you're worrying about. All right. That's right, Manana. We don't read so much as we used to. Well, we have the internet, we have apps. There's a lot of other things we're doing that we didn't do in earlier generation. All right, let me look for other questions. How to enhance your vocabulary. How to enhance your vocabulary. This is not exactly um, critical thinking, but it relates a little bit. Language and uh, th critical thinking are related. Uh, you enhance your vocabulary by imagining trying to depict or describe a situation that you don't know how to do and then 
doing it, finding ways, looking up words, looking up synonyms. There's, there's no trick here. You just look up. That's what I do. I look up synonyms. I look up different ways or I think of, you know, I might Google different ways to, you know, you know, express this. Synonyms or a reverse dictionary. A reverse dictionary is often very helpful in this case. All right. All right, I think we're nearly, oh my gosh, we have so many questions here. This is great. Thank you. Thank you, Davud. Davud. All right. <clears throat> uh, someone's asked about the link. The link is in my biography, in my bio on Instagram, but I will also post it tomorrow in a story or a post, or both. Do we always need to be critically thinking? This is a question, no, obviously not. You can listen as a friend. You can listen with empathy, with emotion. These are often what friends need. They don't need analysis. They need you to listen with empathy and just be a friend, maybe not even say anything. So no, this is definitely not something you need to use in every conversation. All right. If you've missed the live, I will upload it on YouTube. Thank you, Angela, Andre. Thank you. If I did not answer your question, can you please write me um, a direct message and I will be happy to do it. Thank you so much, um, Gulia. I think I got that right. The best way to learn vocabulary for me was reading books. I read books. I liked words and phrases and I copied them. I took them and I used them for myself in my own context. That's how I um, expanded my vocabulary, enlarged it. Okay, Dua and Hadith, you've asked me two questions. I, okay, okay, here's a question that Dua has asked. Can you critically th read through medical books? Now, medical books... Um, it depends on the medical book, but if you're, if you're studying um, anatomy and physiology, for example, which is traditionally one of the most difficult subjects in the medical studies, in your medical studies, this, you don't exercise critical thinking here. You exercise memory. All of the different muscles, ligaments, and body, bone parts, this is just a lot of rehearsal, a lot of memory from what I understand. But critical thinking is not as important. Now, there will be some areas where it is, but in general, you're learning, as I understand it, more processes. So you want to understand sort of accepted methods of practicing medicine before you start to criticize it. So critical thinking might not be advisable until you become more of an expert. In the beginning, you just want to learn, memorize what the body, where the, you know, the names of the bones and all of the other elements of the body and then understand the process and be less critical and more sort of absorbing information. I hope that helps. Thank you, uh, Tarim. I know Tarim, thank you. All right, and you've asked another the question, another question, how many pages should we read each day? It depends on your homework. So I can't answer that question. Um, in the medical field, you have hun sometimes hundreds of pages each week you have to do. So this is difficult. Other subjects have very few pages that they have to read. So I can't answer that. My question, my answer would be, assess the total number of pages you need to read for that week and divide it by seven. And that's the answer. This is a very good question. I can't quite read it, Alicia. Do you think that critical thinking and critical writing are the same? Well, that's a great question because I have implicitly, not directly, but indirectly, I've implicitly suggested that it might be, but it's not, obviously. But there is a huge, so if you're critically writing, you're critically thinking. 
But if you're critically thinking, you don't have to be critically writing. You can be critically speaking. So there are different ways to express critical thinking. But if, you, but if you're writing critically, that means you're thinking critically. I hope that makes sense. How long does it take to become to, to obtain a good reading skill? It depends on the person. But I know that you have to be consistent. If reading is important for your career, your profession, or just your personal sort of interests, then you should read regularly, whatever that means. I can tell you when I learned my languages, I was I, I was very um very persistent, very dedicated. I spent eight hours reading in you know German libraries, Italian, Spanish, Polish, and Russian libraries. I just went in for eight hours and read each day until it got easier. And uh, But for some of you, you're better. I'm not a great reader initially. It takes me a lot of effort. So for some of you, you're naturally better and you can do it faster. For me, I wasn't so good and I needed extra time. Now, I know for some of you, you don't have that time, but I was a student, and so I took all day to read some of these things. All right. Okay, I want to thank you. I think we're near the end. If I did not get your answer, question answered, ask me later. I just want to say thank you all. I hope this was beneficial. I hope you sort of took something from it. My goal is that you took something from it that you can positively benefit because my goal each live is that you take something positive from it and you're a little bit better, either in your mind or in your language than you were before the live. I wanna thank you all and I hope from the bottom of my heart that we have a better 2021 than we did collectively in 2020. Thank you all. Have a good evening or afternoon or night, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.